going out and they went to the auction and they bought our goats for us, they tagged our goats, they fence trained our goats, they did all the hard stuff. And then they brought the goats to our property and they released them, they named them, which I'm not happy about. But then this gentleman right here, Travis was an intern and we gave him a very small stipend and he took care of the goats all summer long. So while they were in their paddocks, he checked on them and volunteers checked on them too. But anytime they got sick, he'd go out and he, he actually knew what to do. He could trim their hooves, all the things that my staff had no idea what to do, we were able to have a student do. And again, it sounds like it's like child labor, but this was part of his curriculum. But more importantly, this was something he wanted to do as a career. So don't say it's just a volunteer because you have to be creative and find ways to be able to utilize these volunteers in ways that you would never think. Just think about all the different people that are out there and their skill sets. I promise I'm almost done. If I can get this thing go. Okay, and then finally, the next level. So after the goats go in, we then need to have volunteers come up and do the cleanup. Because the goats only get it kind of clear for us, but they really build efficiency in the volunteers that come in later. So these are students from Grand Valley, they're restoration students, and we also have a lot of individuals that come out and do internships with us from Grand Valley that help remove invasives and other projects after the fact. So a lot of the universities and the colleges have internships, and that's a reliable source. Once a week, these students come out and they really are dedicated. Again, one of the things that I've learned over my career is you have to think about it as win-win. You can't just think about how they're going, to, what they're gonna do for you. You have to think about what you can give them. So for when I get an intern, they're thinking about all the different places they can intern. And I say, this is what we can do for you. We can give you experiences that you're not going to get here and here and here. And that's really important because we have no money. So these, these students do this absolutely for free. So luckily, we're in a situation right now where most internships do not pay. So it's a great market, even if you don't have, because most students have to do some kind of volunteering and experience. And you can see the benefits of their work. This used to be an impenetrable shoreline of the Grand River. You couldn't even see the river because there was so much bittersweet and honeysuckle and multiflora rose. And look at what goats and students can do. <laughs> it would have taken us years. And, and going back to those kids from Allendale, we actually had to cancel their work day this year because we ran out of bittersweet. So that's in an area that honestly I walked a few years and thought I'm never touching this property. This is lost. There is no way we have enough resources, no, not enough herbicide in the world to take care of this situation. And only five years later, I had to cancel a work day. So it is definitely possible. You just have to be creative, think positively, and get goats. So this is that shoreline I told you that we had 800 feet that you couldn't see the water. And now, this is what it looks like. It's gorgeous. But it'll be even more gorgeous when it's full of dogwoods and elderberries and all the other good stuff that'll soon black its view. And I'm done. So questions are in the end. <laughs>